Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw. I'm here with uh, two familiar faces, uh, if you've been watching us. I'm here with Robin Tauk, who is the chairman of Tourism Cares, and Greg Takahara, who's the president and CEO for Tourism Cares. And Tourism Cares just did a rebranding and also a new category of membership. So uh, we're going to let them tell you a little bit about what's going on. Obviously, we're going to review what Tourism Cares is and what it does and what it will be doing in the future. And you're going to find out all about that and more insider travel report. Now, first to both of you, how are you and where are you? Robin, Where? Or how are you doing and where are you? Hi, James. I'm in my hometown of Westport, Connecticut, and Talc has relaunched its travel plans, and uh, it's a beautiful day here in New England. Thank yeah. you. And, and Greg, where are you? James, I'm in Boston, and uh, I actually just returned from a Skull luncheon, our first Skull luncheon after, um, I think it was 17 months. Wow. So uh, it was great to see colleagues in person, so uh, doing well, enjoying the beautiful weather. Absolutely. We're here and uh, things are looking up in the business. It's great to, to do this. And now you have your Tourism Cares that's doing a lot of new stuff all of a sudden. It's great uh, and emerging as well. Uh, let, let's first of all, let's review kind of what is Tourism Cares today? How has the organization evolved into what it is today? And is it still really focused on sustainability and tourism? We'll start with you, Greg. No, oh, absolutely. I mean, we're still quite focused on tourism sustainability. I think the way that we look at it, James, is that we're, we're kind of moving from a self-serving perspective to really an empowerment model mm -hmm. uh, for the travel industry. Uh, we've often, because of our legacy, been seen or viewed as a volunteer-based organization. Uh, now we're expanding to better serve the people and places of travel. Uh, through the intentional development of programs that empower travel companies to really infuse positive impact into their work. And, and I think that, you know, it's one of those crossroads, right, where, you know, we'll always hold on to our wonderful legacy of our volunteer uh, events, uh, but we've moved to really try to create a global footprint of positive impact. No, that's great. And Robin, anything to add to that? Oh, yes. Well, I've been around Tourism Care since its beginning, around the millennium, a little after that. And indeed, uh, originally, uh, this great organization brought together so many companies and uh, entities to learn about sustainability back in those times and to help the people and places of America. Uh, but Greg and I have worked together uh, over a dozen years in really taking Tourism Care global and expanding the kinds of companies we're working with, uh, new memberships we're going to talk about in a minute, yep. an incredibly diverse industry that is a different Tourism Care today than it was 10 years ago. Oh, absolutely. And I, I remember the days when we sort of brought two organizations together that were backed by NTA and USDOA, and now uh, we brought them together to create Tourism Cares, which was, uh, you know, they, it was always sustainably focused before sustainable was a thing, I think. And uh, now, now it's even more so. Now, let's talk a little bit about, uh, first, this new brand campaign for Tourism Cares. Uh, Greg, uh, why did you launch this campaign now, and, and what's your objective? Sorry for that airplane in the background, but, um, you know. That's, that's a good thing, Greg. I mean, people are flying and traveling. It, it's an absolutely good thing. Um, you, you kind of forget uh, when you're in the, the pathway how much it's changed. Um, but, you know, when you say, why do we do it now, it's, it's interesting because, obviously, if, if you consider the fact that we're emerging from the pandemic, there's a lot of positive optimism about the industry. Um, it seems like incredible timing, but this was something that we had started to engage with MMGY on a low bono agreement where they were incredibly generous with their services in terms of helping us do a marketing rebrand prior to the pandemic. Um, but like most things, uh, you know, things take time to develop. And I, I think one of the things that's so great about this timing is that we're all emerging from the pandemic and we're all looking to do so. Um, in a collaborative fashion. We're looking to do so uh, where we all emerge stronger and better together. Uh, and so I think this is representative of really an industry-wide effort uh, for us to do so. And, and actually, Robin, I mean, you have, a, you have a new logo and you got sort of new collateral materials. Uh, and hopefully we're going to show a little of this right now, but uh, tell us about that and that design and all that. 
Um, the purpose was not really completely about designs and logos, but to contemporize what the travel industry, the power of the travel industry, and the very important emerging topics of today, and to be able to show that quickly, succinctly, and in a style that is grabbing and informative. And so far, we are adding companies and adding membership in this difficult time that Greg was referring to and new categories of membership. I've never seen in my 40 years of industry such, a, such an outburst of wanting to join Tourism Cares. So we had a bit of a, I think like many websites, we had a bit of a before in our visual presentation and right. the board of directors, and I was working with them closely, decided that this would be a time to do a a cohesive, holistic look at Tourism Cares today. So uh, that's what we'll be showcasing to you now. It just launched last week in May of 2021. No, that's great. And, and as you mentioned, along with the new branding, you're also opening up your membership to other categories and to travel professionals. And I assume in this case, this could also mean largely travel advisors. Uh, Robin, why did you do this now? And, and why do you think travel advisors should be interested in joining Tourism Cares? Very easy to answer, James. Uh, you've been to many of our events. I think you started in the industry in the early 1990s or so. And over the many years in the events, in the training, in the tools, and the capacity for understanding sustainability and the future of travel, who do we get to many of these? The great companies in travel bringing their employees, but more and more individuals, professionals right. who want to advance their own, despite what their company may be doing, they want to advance their own understanding of this difficult and all-encompassing topic of sustainability. So we have several uh, new opportunities for travel professionals and, yes, travel advisors who are absolutely integral. As you know, they stand between the suppliers, the destinations, and the traveling public. In, in all generations, and what better group of individuals to bring into uh, understanding sustainability wherever they are on their journey into the many activities that, uh, you know, Greg can expound on that we're now. Yeah, well, well, let's talk. What, what, Greg, what are the benefits of two travel advisors, to belonging to Tourism Cares? And, and I guess the other thing is, why is it taken so long to invite travel advisors in? Uh, you know, I, I know a lot of them might have been interested in the past, but now, you know, they probably should have been part of it, but they may not have thought about it. Well, first of all, I would just say they have been part of it. They have been a part right. of our legacy. But it, as you know, and as Robin has mentioned, I, our primary focus was B2B, was business to business. And I, I think what we've learned from this pandemic is that, uh, from an unfortunate standpoint, is that uh, we've lost many uh, people uh, in the industry um, who have either been furloughed or have been let go from their companies as, as a result of this uh, tragic time. Um, and yet, these are the people who have had heartstrings with Tourism Cares that want to remain connected with Tourism Cares. So that was part of our impetus to create the professional membership. But plus, I think when we talk about the sustainability journey, one thing that we like to say here at Tourism Cares is that will meet you where you're at. Right. So no matter whether you're just starting your sustainability journey or whether you're further advanced in your sustainability journey, there's something for Tourism Cares for everyone. And we feel that this is a time where we need to represent that this is just not a top-down type of effort. This is very much a bottom-up type of effort as well, too where everything happens no matter where you're at in the journey, we're going to meet you there. And, and this creates this opportunity to have uh, individuals because we often talk about with the sustainability journey, it needs to be personal. It often starts at home. It starts right at the dinner table where the younger generations in particular are talking about single-use plastics. They're mm -hmm. talking about being more responsible relative to their to their vacation choices, you know, where they're going to stay, what they're going to do, their carbon footprint. So as a result, I think that this is a perfect time to engage individuals as well as companies. Absolutely. Now, Robin, what's the cost for uh, this new tra travel professional category that, that we're so where advisors can can uh, uh, get on board, become a member, and what what is what are they what are kind of the benefits and the training and education they can get uh, as part of being a member? Well, first of all, James, it's a very reasonable ninety nine dollars for the year. That's just under one hundred dollars. <laughs> 
let me just list off a number of things that they would get right away. First of all, we have the, the industry's best meaningful travel platform. It's a whole array of tools and education and learnings about the UN sustainability goals and so much information that can only be accessed by members. So that's early training and tools right away. We have a series of webinars that Greg and his team have put together that are six or eight a year. Um, one of them is coming up on May 26, called the, with some of the best destinations in the world, including New York City will be on that webinar. What are they doing differently to engage? Think of the travel professionals that would want to know what New York City is doing different now, you know, one of the greatest travel destinations. Um, importantly, CSR professionals that are in the companies that have been members for 10 or 15 years, share their learnings and share their corporate uh, 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 efforts, whether they're in airlines, hotels, tours, destinations with the other members. So they are giving of their time. That's a great learning, you know, online hosts. And of course, our events, which I hope Greg will speak to, are sold out. We have events now globally in Jordan, in Colombia, in Puerto Rico. And we want to assure, and our board wants to assure that the access to, the, to coming to these couple hundred events or virtual is as open to an individual as it is to a 25-year member. So what a great opportunity, you know, to join now and be part of this movement. No, absolutely. I would agree. And I have, as you mentioned earlier, I participated in a few of the, your meetings. Uh, most, the one that I remember most recently was to Jordan, which was an amazing trip. Uh, we had such an interesting time and so many uh, things came out of that. I mean, uh, tour operators... Uh, went over and found sustainable projects in Jordan and, uh, you know, put them into their tours. Uh, well, uh, being you know, from the tour operator community and wearing today for your interview one of the amazing works of art by a whole community of kids and, uh, uh, and a social enterprise outside of Amman, when tour companies like my family's tour company and so many other great companies change their itinerary somewhat to be more off the beaten track or to become right. more aware of the changes in Jordan. And look what is happening in Jordan as a, you know, as a central country in the Middle East region. Um, these opportunities that you saw and we saw, we didn't even know existed. Right, so right. it's not just left to the product developers. It's left to you know, the individuals of the industry. And thank you for acknowledging that Meaningful Travel Summit. And we have several more in the pipeline. No, that's great. And I, I got, got me a chance to, to stay overnight in a Bedouin tent and walk out of the Wadi Rum on a camel. So that was uh, a plus too. Uh, although uh, it was a little cold there in the desert that time, but we, we survived. It was an amazing experience. Uh, Greg, Greg, let's talk a little bit about, let's go back to how Tourism Cares has evolved over the years. Again, we were talking about usually you have, you know, two, two or more events where you gather uh, Tourism Cares uh, members to focus on sustainability projects at a particular destination. Uh, how are you going to expand that now and what sort of activities will the group, uh, your group engage in for the future? Sure, well, James, you know, like so many organizations, we've had to postpone our in-person events uh, and uh, we continue to set dates and keep our fingers crossed as we do. Um, but I think we're pretty optimistic about the fact that we're going to be taking a, a smaller contingent of product developers, as you mentioned, uh, you know, primarily tour operators, but certainly if there are travel advisors who are interested in how they integrate social enterprises into, you know, custom itineraries for their, their clients, uh, their clients who in particular are looking at, you know, in, they, they want to have these immersive experiences that, as Robin mentioned, are off the beaten track. Uh, then we're going to, we hope to be able to take a small contingent to Medellin, Colombia right. uh, in November of this year. Uh, but when we look at what we would consider to be our more traditional, meaningful travel summits, um, we have two lined up for North America in 2022. Uh, we'll be in North Lake Tahoe in May of 2022. And then we'll be in Victoria, British Columbia in October of 2022. And as you mentioned, education, volunteering, uh, collaboration, and networking are all components of those particular summits. Uh, but one thing that we like to do as well, too, is create a focus around the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Mm -hmm. and, and as most of you know, there's 17 of them, which makes it 
really unmanageable to be able to tackle in one particular summit. So what we like to do is we like to focus in on four or five. So with regards to Lake Tahoe, they're going to be very climate action or re related. Um, as you can imagine, they've had challenges uh, coming, you know, coming from pre-pandemic with regards to over tourism. They've had their challenges with lake conservation and wildfires. Um, so we'll be working with the local community there to try to put a spotlight on the challenges that that community has had. With regards to Victoria, British Columbia, we'll be working uh, primarily with a lot of their community tourism uh, folks uh, who really work very much with indigenous communities as mm -hmm. well. And uh, this is really an opportunity to, again, engage with the community at large for us to bring forth not only social enterprise, but, you know, nonprofits and really focus in on the local ecosystem and show and demonstrate how, how they work together um, so they can bring the, that back to their own communities. No, that's great. And, and again, having participated in these events, uh, I found they really are productive in terms of uh, what you get to experience collectively as a group, uh, the focus on sustainability, the focus on sustainable tourism projects, uh, it, it was just amazing, at least the, the Jordan one, the last one I remember. And I, I've, you know, I've gone and done the, the clean up this or clean up that, uh, you know, you do projects like plant trees, things like that. It, it, it sort of brings the group together, but it's also an understanding of exactly what is, what is sustainable tourism and, and how can we effectively uh, promote it. Um, Robin, what is kind of Tourism Care's vision for the future, and how, how do you hope to be part of the effort to really continue to be part of the effort to promote sustainable tourism? Well, I'm very proud, as you know, James, to be second generation leader of this great organization. My dad, Arthur Tauk, was one of the original, um, original chairmen, and at that time, the vision was to protect and enhance the people and places of travel for future generations. And uh, at that time, we were focused on North America and bringing together this big U.S. and Canadian travel industry, and also Mexico as well, North American industry. And frankly, we achieved this, and we went well beyond tour operators and hoteliers. We have the most diverse collection of travel industry companies and hopefully individuals that is has ever been amassed on the planet. It's a really a tremendous accomplishment. So the vision for the future, quite frankly, is to continue to be this hub of travel sustainability in the global environment. Mm -hmm. We achieved this at home. It is time to take our plan and our action globally. I know I'm really intrigued by that. Greg and I were working together on this with the hopes and the dreams of getting there in 2012. We are there today. We want to bring together governments, NGOs and the private sector of travel to achieve and be a catalyst for change, real change, not volunteering per se, that's part of the action, but real change that starting really in the 2021 and post pandemic that we're building forward better and that we are now achieving what the industry and, and the travelers have really been somewhat crying out for in the years prior to the pandemic. So to be a global catalyst of, of convening this great power of travel in the travel industry to make lasting change, it's a tall order, but that's our vision. And uh, we, yeah. do, we hope to be there. Well, uh, obviously, it's, 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 we've been so focused on the pandemic. And, uh, you know, sometimes I ask that question, you know, everybody's just trying to recover. I mean, how can we focus on sustainability, too? But the answer is it's not an either or. It's it's kind of emerging uh, with a more focus on sustainable tourism. You know, it's so interesting that a year and a half ago we're talking about over tourism, and now there are places that have no tourism, and it's been devastating to everyone. So now, when we as we grow back, I think it's more important than ever that we grow back in a sustainable fashion to know what the limits are and uh, you know what we should be doing. Uh, Greg, anything to add to that? Well, let me just jump back to when you're talking about the member benefit for the professional membership. Um, one of the things is, you know, we'll continue with regards to our summits to always have a, a member price and a non-member price. Uh, and in many instances, the differential could be as much as 50 or $60. When you're paying $99, you're kind of getting that 50 or $60 back if you have any intention of joining us in Lake Tahoe or in, in, you know, in British Columbia. 
So that's that's a really great benefit to know that if you're going to be joining us, you're probably going to get over half of your money back from that membership. Um, but you know what I would just say is that the travel industry overall isn't looking at sustainability as a path forward. You know they they still see it as kind of part of the business um, or something that's niche or something that's kind of an appendix to the real core business. Uh, and I think that what we're seeing is that businesses are really starting to take this very seriously. And Tourism Cares takes the path to sustainable and responsible tourism practices um, from a standpoint of educating. And as I mentioned before, meeting everybody where they're at. Uh, we've always been a great convener in terms of using that 160 member organization to help connect the dots. And I think it's more important these days to connect the dots because everybody you know, knows that if you have to do it alone, it's virtually impossible. You know, We're going to have to do this together. And in whether we're talking about working together as an industry or whether we're just talking about how a company starts to operationalize sustainability, somebody else has done it and somebody else has done it well. And we can point the finger to those members of ours who are so willing to give you know examples and to be able to help others to follow the same pathway that that they have you know achieved. So part of the 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 real value add, I guess you would say, is the fact that we can help to connect the dots. We can help to continue to put forward best practices and set and set the right example. No, that's great. And uh, Robin, you know, you're in the, in the press release on uh, the, the whole new membership thing, you're quoted heavily in the travel advisor category, you're talking about them. Is there any other message you want to send out to travel advisors about Tourism Cares and, and really the reason why they should strongly consider membership? Uh, well, I would say that, you know, travel really moves people. Uh, every travel advisor I've met, and I just saw many down in Naples, Florida, a few days ago, they really are passionate about the work they do. Many of the men have been in the industry many, many years. We have a lot of Gen Z and millennials coming in, and they want to individually make a difference, and they want to have access to what's out there. And here we have this 18-year organization. I just really want to extend a welcoming hand to all of them. In addition, we have impact funds. We didn't talk about that, but over the years, we have amassed in destinations in America where people live, where many of these travel professionals live, or where their favorite destinations are, over 35 to 40 destinations. Tourism Cares has put together a list of, of hundreds of nonprofits that have, bet, have, have been vetted and benefit, and they're right on our website. And just to have access to that or create a relationship themselves with the impact fund or donate to it or donate to it in times of, of disasters such as we've had in hurricanes and otherwise. Sure. I, I can't do anything other than to really invite every travel professional listening to this, uh, whether they're a travel advisor or otherwise, to give it a go on their own. Give it a try, come and see what a welcoming community we are. And, um, and uh, I know many of them care right now. It's a little hard to know where to go to get information and to meet other like like same individuals, and and uh, we hope to have hundreds, thousands of new members with this new category. So thank you so much, James, for giving us the time, you know, to tell you more about what what we are doing at Tourism Cares. Well, certainly, it sounds like a great time to uh, join this community, Tourism Cares community, and and really look at sustainable tourism. And Greg, anything to add to that? And also uh, tell us uh, where uh, travel advisors and other travel professionals can go to find out more information, A, about joining and also just about the organization as a whole. Well, we're really excited with this whole rebranding came a new website as well too. So they should go to www.tourismcares.org. Um, and as well, you know, everybody's connected via social Media, you know, we send out a lot of social media posts. Um, if it's something that resonates with you, please repost to your network. Um, that's always appreciated. You know, but what I what I would say is just that, you know, when I, when I reference the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, I think that we all recognize the power of the travel and tourism industry 
And, you know, it's been said, and it's, I, I, I don't, I've never heard any, anybody absolutely refute it, but travel and tourism is the one industry that touches upon all 17 goals. Mm -hmm. So when you think about the ripple effect that our industry has, uh, that's where, you know, I, I think we can really make a difference. We can really change the world. And, and that's, that's an incredible, you know, amount of power to have in, in your hands. But it, it starts with each and every one of us. Um, and we can't do it all, you know, by ourselves. So we have to do it together. Absolutely. Well, well said. Well, Robin, Greg, thank you very much for taking the time to tell us about Tourism Cares, the rebranding, uh, the new membership categories, and having uh, uh, participated in your events over the years and certainly watched the development of Tourism Cares, I can wholeheartedly endorse this. Uh, if you want to know more about sustainability and tourism, if you want to be part of this community, uh, it's really a great idea to join now, especially now they have a new category for individuals. So again, thank you so much and uh, hope to see you soon at a Tourism Cares event. Well, we hope you're going to join us in Columbia, James. I'm looking forward. Yeah, I, I, we, I was going to do that last year, but then, of course, we kept moving the date, and now we're in, in California. California. It's in California. Well, California is before that. Yeah, yeah we'll see. What, yeah, that would be good, too. Anyway, well, listen, thank you, Robin. Thank you, Greg. And I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report. <laughs>